Okay, hi there, and welcome to the first of a short series of three revision videos on the economics of healthcare. Uh, in this video, we will look at some of the factors causing growing demand for healthcare, not just in the UK, but in virtually every other country. There is certainly increasing pressure on health sectors, not least the National Health Service in the UK. The NHS was established in July of 1948, and the founding principle, if you like, the founding aim of the NHS was to provide a comprehensive uh, range of health services to all UK citizens, crucially financed uh, by general taxation and crucially also free at the point of use. Now, according to Parliament Research data, spending on the NHS has risen substantially uh, in that period, of course. Uh, in the first year, £11 billion pounds of health, health service spending. In 2017, over 144 billion. Typically, healthcare spending in the UK has risen each year in real terms, and it's also outpaced the increase in both GDP and total government spending. This chart uh, provides an indication of this. Healthcare spending in the UK as a share of GDP has increased since 1997, when it was 6.2 percent, and by 2017, although there's been a little bit of a levelling off, healthcare spending was 9.6 percent. Of the, of the UK's GDP. So what are some of the factors driving increased healthcare demand? There's certainly strong pressure for rising healthcare spending in many countries, and I've picked out for you seven main causal factors. Uh, more general, uh, generally speaking, the NHS is, is, is facing pressure in all kinds of different ways, uh, from an aging population, uh, an increasing population, changing expectations, etc. So let's go through them. First of all, an ageing population has a direct effect on healthcare spending, particularly uh, given that the, the cost of the NHS of treating chronic illness is often very substantial. Life expectancy has gone up, and of course that raises uh, costs uh, at the end of uh, people's lives, they increase costs in, in particular of social care, uh, looking after uh, geriatric patients. Increased expectations are also important, expectations constantly changing, People's expectations of what the health service might be able to do for them typically grow most years. There's been a rise in the size of the population, driven by, in part, high levels of net inward migration. And of course, there are also the costs of new drugs, new treatments, uh, which the NHS is able to provide as research and innovation uh, fast forwards in the health sector. There's been an increase in chronic illness and conditions, including type 2 diabetes and obviously greater awareness of and uh, potential to treat mental illness. And one so, must also think about some of the consequences of high persistent levels of relative poverty and inequality, particularly in parts of the UK where GDP per capita and long term unemployment is much higher. Put together, lots and lots of factors driving healthcare demand up. Here's the ageing population chart. Um, the figures showing the median age of the population in the UK, which was 34 or 35 in 1950, and it's now heading towards uh, forecast to be 45 by 2050, significant increase. Interestingly, cancer rates tend to go obviously with age. Uh, in 2018-19, over 160,000 patients were treated for cancer after having been reviewed, referred by their GP. That was 10% higher than the previous year. Cancer referrals which can affect anybody at any age, of course, but typically people of older age, they're 32% higher than five years ago. Uh, health and social care costs tend to rise in the latter stage of people's lives, as this data chart from Northern Ireland shows. If you take the population aged over 65, uh, nearly two-thirds of them have a long-standing illness. That figure rises clearly uh, beyond the age of 75, particularly for men. Uh, this chart shows uh, the number of hospital admissions for obesity just in England from 2002 to 2008 by gender. Um, according to data from NHS England, 29% of adults in England are obese. A further 36% are overweight but not obese. And of course the NHS is facing those pressures from treating some of the side effects, the consequences of high levels of obesity. In terms of the operating expenses, so the demand for healthcare is growing up, and of course that places increased pressure on the operating costs of the NHS. So uh, this, this is for the financial year 2019. 
Drug costs were the single biggest expense for the NHS last year, over seven, nearly £7.5 billion. Pounds, and the NHS now spends more than £2 billion pounds each year buying or purchasing healthcare from other providers, including those operating in the private healthcare insurance market. A new survey of GPs has found that average waiting times have continued to climb. This is an indicator of healthcare scarcity. The average wait is now 13 days, and that's risen, uh, I think, close to 15 days in 2019, according to recent data. Oftentimes, patients have to wait for, for more than three weeks. Waiting lists is a, is a symptom of growing demand. It's a, it's a form of health rationing, and this is more or less inevitable, even if GP surgeries find increased operational efficiencies. The number of GP surgeries fell nearly 2% year on year between 2018 and 2019. And uh, the persist persistent funding crisis in the health service has been well documented for many years, especially when we get to significant rise in, in um, winter illnesses and accident and emergency uh, admissions. Uh, indeed, in this survey from Ipsos Morris 2018, uh, the biggest share of people saying that their healthcare system is overstretched, a sign of excess demand, was indeed in Great Britain. 85% of people saying that compared to 80% in Hungary, and even quite well, well ahead of Sweden in third place with 74%. So hopefully this gives you a, a picture for the growing demand for healthcare in the UK. Uh, resources, healthcare resources of land and labour and capital are being uh, really stretched as that demand increases year on year.